don't think it's on. I'm, Now you're on. You have to. You all have to use that one for some reason. Okay. The microphone works, but the other one doesn't. Yep. Okay. That's hers. You can be seated. Okay. As I as I read scriptures from Ephesians five, I want you both to pay very close attention to what I'm, what's stated here. These are God's words that the Holy Spirit will honor as you stand in faith. The world has the idea that marriage is just a contract. And marriage is a contract. We don't make light of that. But it's more than that. When words of faith are spoken according to the word of God between two born-again believers, the power of God goes into operation. And a miracle takes place when the faith of you two is released in God's power. God honors your faith and brings the two of you together in union. So with that in mind, I want you to listen to what it says. I'm reading out of Ephesians 5, and it's out of the Message Bible. Okay? Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ as he exercises such leadership, wives should also likewise submit to their husbands. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wife. Exactly as Christ did for the church, a love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're really one in marriage. No one abuses his body, does he? No, he feeds and nourishes it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. And this is how a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife. No longer two, they become one flesh. This is a huge mystery. Remember when I talked to you about that? I don't, and I don't pretend to understand it at all. What is clearest to me is the way Christ treats the church, and this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself and loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. So, Dale, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. And Brenda, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Okay, so now upon that public profession of your faith, you've made known to all these people here in the church that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is your Lord and Savior. Yes. So, I want to say to the congregation and, and the witnesses here, that when two people join themselves together in Jesus Christ by faith, according to God's own words, and we just read it in Ephesians 5, they, are, they stand cleansed as clean before God as Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. And it's not just forgiveness of sins. They were made brand new creations when they accepted Jesus as their Savior. That's what it tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man receives Jesus as his Savior, he's a new creation. And so it's a miraculous work of the Holy Spirit that happened to you. A miracle took place when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, and the Holy Spirit used the very power of God 
His creative power to cause your spirit to be reborn. It's the same power that God used when he raised Jesus from the dead. And he brought you by G to Jesus by that power. So when two born-again Christians come together to be married before God, as husband and wife, the Apostle Paul calls it a mystery. In Ephesians 5, it told us that. It was a mystery. We don't understand it, just like we don't understand the new birth. Okay? And he said, it also says in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that you become one spirit with him. And in Ephesians 5.30, it says that you become one flesh with the Lord. You are his, he is yours, and you are one together with him. So what I want to say to you both is if you understand this, you'll understand how the, how, uh, the miracle that takes place when, you're, when you are pronounced husband and wife. Okay? Your spirits will be joined together. And you will become one. You will not be one only in the eyes of the law, but you will be one creation together, joined together by the Holy Spirit. Okay. So don't ever tamper with this union. The love of God doesn't say, I love you, and, but do you really love me? It just simply says, I love you. So don't ever let the sun go down on your wrath. Always take care of those kinds of things and let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Let the Word of God be your guide. Something holy and something beyond reproach is going to happen here today. So I want to speak to the two witnesses, Morgan and Chad, because you are going to put your signature on the marriage certificate as witnesses to this marriage. In the Word of God, in Matthew 18, 19, it says, Again I say unto you, if two of you agree on earth as touching anything, it will be done by, our, by my Father, which is in heaven. And so it's talking about agreement, and you're agreeing to this marriage. So I want to, uh, you're not here just for tradition. You are here for a serious purpose, to bear witness forever of this miraculous uh, union that's taking place. And so don't ever be in disagreement with this union, but always do everything you can to keep these two people together. And then I want to speak to the congregation as well, because in the eyes of God, these two people are coming together, washed in the blood of the Lamb, they pray, they that they they know with all their heart that this is of God. This is they're supposed to be a, a couple together. And so I'm charging all of you to be always be in agreement to this marriage and never, you know, take Dale's side or Brenda's side in a dispute. But always be in agreement that it needs to stay together. Woe be to any person that would tamper with this because it's a holy union brought together by God. Dale, do you take Brenna as your wife, as your own flesh, to love her even as Christ loves the church, to protect her and care for her for the rest of your life? I do. Okay, then I want to, I want you to turn to her, and I want you to make this profession of your faith. I, Dale, according to the word of God. I, Dale, according to the word of God. Leave my father and my mother. Leave my father and my mother. And I join myself to you to be a husband to you. And I join myself to you to be a husband to you. From this moment forward, we shall be one. From this moment forward, we shall be one. Brenna, do you take Dale as your husband, submitting yourself to him as unto the Lord, showing reverence to him as the head of this union for the rest of your life? I do. Then turn to him and make this profession of your faith. 
I, Brenna, according to the word of God. I, Brenna, so according to the word of God. <laughs> Submit myself to you to be a wife to you. Submit myself to you to be a wife to you. From this moment forward, we shall be one. From this moment forward, we shall be one. A ring is a very precious thing, a token of your faith and love. This ring is made from precious metal. It's a never-ending circle that indicates the continuing love of God. A love that never fails, never presents itself haughtily, nor is it puffed up. The love of God and the faith of God causes his power to move in your life. So I want both of you to wear these rings knowing that. It, this ring is a continual reminder of that. And of the confession of faith that you've made to each other and to God. The word of God says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So if anybody can break up this union, it would be Satan. So you don't ever want to give him any place. So Dale, I want you to take this ring. And I want you to say this to her um, as you put it on her finger. With this ring, I be wed. With this ring, I be wed. It is a token of my love for you and a token of my faith. It is a token of my love for you and a token of faith. That I release now in Jesus' name. That I release now in Jesus' name. A ring can mean two different things. It can be a never-ending sign of love, or it can be a shackle. I charge you to always remember this. Brenda stands by your side, Dale, not under your feet. And you have the responsibility of being the head of this union. You have a spiritual responsibility before God and before man. I want you to wear this ring in remembrance that she's your helpmate. And this ring must never be a shackle of dominance, but always a, re a reminder of faith and love. Okay? So Brenna, I'm going to have you place that ring on his finger. And I want you to say, with this ring I be with. With this ring I be with. I give it to you as a token of my faith. I give it to you as my token of faith. I believe with all my heart that this is forever. I believe with all my heart that this is forever. It represents my love and my faith. It represents my love and my faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost glue time. <laughs> As a representative of Jesus Christ before Almighty God and in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I now pronounce that you are one in the, in the Spirit and one in, the, in, the, in your union. You are now husband and wife. <laughs> so now, Brenna and Dale want to do their sound picture. And this is the mingling together of their two families, their two lives.
didn't let them kiss yet because I have to bless their union. So I'm going to read out of Deuteronomy 28, and I'm, I'm using the New Living Testament, and this is, this is your inheritance. This is a promise of God. So it says there, if you fully obey the Lord your God and keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit, pastures, and bread boards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouses. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. The Lord will give you, the, give you prosperity in the land that he swore to, you, to your ancestors to give you, blessing you with many children, numerous livestock and abundant crops, the Lord will send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work you do. You will lend to many nations, but you will never need to borrow from them. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today and you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You'll be above only and not beneath. You must not turn away from serving the Lord and honoring him in your marriage. And, and the Lord guarantees blessing. Amen. So you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Thank you.